most cults don't wear robes or live in communes. In fact, most cult members don't even realize they're in a cult. So here are 10 specific patterns that can help you recognize for yourself if you are indeed in a cult. Number one, the leader is the ultimate authority. If you're not allowed to criticize your leader, even if the criticism is true, you're probably in a cult. Cults begin with a charismatic leader who claims some supreme knowledge. They may call themselves a prophet, messiah, messenger, and yes, even president. Cult leaders convince members to forfeit their critical thinking ability in return for a sense of belonging, authority, and purpose. To members, it doesn't matter what the evidence or logic may suggest, the leader is always right, and their misdeeds are always justified. Criticism of the leader is forbidden. Number two, the group suppresses skepticism. If you're only allowed to study your organization through approved sources, you're probably in a cult. Cults view critical thinking as an infectious disease and every effort is made to suppress it. Doubting members are encouraged to isolate themselves from outside influences and focus solely on the doctrine of the cult. Criticism is forbidden. People who contradict the group are viewed as persecutors and are often labeled as anti or apostate or suppressive people. Members are discouraged from consuming any material that is critical of the group. Number three, the group delegitimizes former members. If you can't think of a legitimate reason for leaving your group, you're probably in a cult. Because the cult considers itself the ultimate authority on truth, it can't imagine anybody leaving it with their integrity intact. Thus, it has to perpetrate a false narrative that former members were deceived, proud, immoral, or lazy. If former members speak out, they are dismissed as bitter, angry, dishonest, or evil. Cults often impose some kind of shunning to shame former members and prevent them from infecting other members with the truth. Number four, the group is paranoid about the outside world. If your group insists the end of the world is near, you're probably in a cult. Cults position themselves as a sole refuge from an evil outside world that is intent on their destruction. Cults thrive on conspiracy theories, catastrophic thinking, and persecution complexes. In an effort to draw in more paying members, cults are often very aggressive in their recruitment efforts which are usually justified as saving people from the evil world. Those who reject the cult's message are prideful, evil, or even stupid. Number five, the group relies on shame cycles. If you need your group in order to feel worthy, loved, or sufficient, you're probably in a cult. Cult leaders trap members in shame cycles by imposing abnormally strict codes of conduct, usually prescriptions about diet, appearance, sex, relationships, or the media, guilting members for their shortcomings and then positioning themselves as a unique remedy to the feeling of guilt which they themselves created. Leaders who can make followers feel bad about anything can use shame to manipulate followers into doing anything, even if it's against their own self-interest or better judgment. Number six, the leader is above the law. If you're held to a different moral standard, specifically in regards to sex, you're probably in a cult. A prevalent idea among cult leaders is that they are above the law, be it human or divine. This idea allows them to exploit their followers economically and sexually without repercussions. When confronted, they do not confess but create justifications for their behavior. Sexual grooming of members is common. Loyal cult members will perform any amount of mental gymnastics to justify or ignore the leader's behavior. Number seven, the group uses thought reform methods. If your serious answers are answered with cliches, you're probably in a cult. Brainwashing is the process through which a cult slowly breaks down a person's sense of identity and ability to think rationally. Behaviors like excessive fasting, prayer, hypnosis, scripture reading, chanting, meditations, or drug usage can all be used to increase a person's vulnerability to the leader's suggestions. The hallmark of brainwashing is the use of thought-terminating cliches. Platitudes like follow the leader or doubt your doubts are said over and over again so that members don't have to critically analyze complex issues. Number eight, the group is elitist. If your group is a solution for all the world's problems, you're probably in a cult. Cults see themselves as the enlightened, chosen, and elected organizations tasked with the radically transforming individual lives and the entire world. This elitism creates greater sense of group unity and responsibility centered on a united purpose. However, this sense of responsibility is often manipulated by cult leaders who coerce members into risky financial behavior, sexual favors, free manual labor, or heightened recruitment efforts in order to further the cause. Number nine, there is no financial transparency. If you're not allowed to know what the group does with their money, you're probably in a cult. A group that refuses to disclose its finances is a huge red flag. Ethical organizations have nothing to hide. Cult leaders tend to live opulently while their followers are required to make financial sacrifices. Members are often encouraged to pay their offerings even if it means putting their families at risk. And number 10, the group performs secret rites. If there are secret teachings or ceremonies you didn't discover until after you joined, you're probably in a cult. Cults use secret rituals as rites of passage that solidify a member's loyalty to the group. 
Initiations into these rites usually only come after a member has undergone several tests or made adequate financial contributions. Often cult initiations are confusing, bizarre, or even offensive. This mental dissonance between their sense of confusion and their loyalty to the inner circle convinces the initiative to double their efforts in order to properly appreciate the proceedings. This only further entrenches them in a shame cycle, making them even more susceptible to manipulation. I was wary at first, but Eric Dubé has some compelling arguments supporting Flat Earth that can't be explained. By oh my way. god, Eric Dubé? Yo, Joe Rogan, what you been smoking? You know the Earth's flat, and that's your fear factor. You're such a failed actor, sold out to NASA. Neil Tyson fail shape falls on your breath, yeah. Ooh, lucky, lucky, like when I use bunnies. Remember that bit from when you used to be funny? What the f***? Curse. The Flat Earth. Well, someone was calling me a Flat Earth sellout. F*** these guys. Dubay, if he's ever on the show, I want to be outside waiting with a baseball bat. Okay, Eric. Okay, Trevor, what the f ever threaten me with violence? I'll hit back with a feather, keep your baseball bat and your piss stained beard, cause they are still flat and your cats are weird, dinosaurs are fake and your mate there's queer, now I'll drink me a juice while you have you a beer. I'm glad I brought a lot of beer. You shill, they're coming at you now. Bring it. With flat earth knowledge. Yeah, bring it. Confront you with flat earth reality, bro. Yeah. You're a shell. Wow. You're a flat earth shell, a dinosaur shell. Statements like that that he makes are just uh, fucking irritating. Yeah, I know. That's why I say I'm always pit paleontologists stop when I see them. In museums or any other place, anywhere they're trying to lie to my face. Hey, by the way, anyone remember back when Joe had knowledge and passion? Back when he showed the fake moon landings? Back when he was the last comic standing? He'd out liars and put him in their place like Carlos and Stelia laughing in his face. You know what's interesting about this guy? Is that he knows so much. Yeah, the guy that does 200 proofs the Earth is flat. He's using all this data that's actually factual. Think about it, right now, you have 4 million subscribers that now know this video exists, that know Eric Dubay's name, that know that paleontologists can, can get riled up by this guy. They're now gonna go look. His voice is annoying as fuck. Oh my god. Let's yeah. play more.